Oh, hey there, the internet. I'm back in the nice, safe, non-moving chair that I don't have to operate and with cars and turns and things out there. Yay! It's day 14 of the Teach Thought Reflective Teacher 30-day bloggy vloggity challengey wallengey timey wimey? Anyway, uh, today's prompt is what is educational feedback and how good am I at giving it? Uh, this is something that usually uh, people just throw under the umbrella of grades when you're grading papers. And a lot of times, you know, you just score the paper, you say, like, this or that is right or wrong. Um, and then we, we move on from there. Uh, one of the things, <laughs> yeah, so, it, but it's really, it's supposed to be this whole process of, like, grading, commenting on, like, the quality of student answers, and, you know, giving corrections. And for really, for feedback, for educative feedback to be successful, it needs to be both swift and accurate, and that's really overwhelming, uh, because in addition to that, I think feedback is best given individually. Like, I think it's most meaningful for an individual student is giving them to them on an individual basis, with which the time constraints of the educational process make that almost impossible for most, you know, assignments. Even if it's just, you know, a 10-question assignment, to be able to sit down with each kid and go through their answer and tell them why this or that answer is good or bad or ugly uh, is really really hard to do so and a lot of, a lot of times teachers do it we do it in writing you know we'll, we'll use red pen and give feedback that way um, one of the things that I do with when I give feedback that I think is good for giving feedback is I try to go through and you know if it's something that like let's say it's a written response question you know I'll take their writing and I usually place check marks or like underline things that like make some kind of indication of like these are the parts that you're doing it right and give them like plus plus positive scores on the side. So if it's a three pointer, they should have three check marks in there where they mention the three, you know, important whatevers and then a plus three off to the side. And that is pretty time consuming, but then you know, you need to add in comments and like qualifications as well. Um, sometimes I'll just uh, give pluses, but I won't correct. A lot of the times I won't correct what they got wrong, especially if I know it's an assignment that we'll be going over together in class. So then you know the it's assumed that you know you'll see what you wrote, and then you'll have you know you'll get the right thing. It's really important when you're giving feedback to force students to confront their misconceptions, and again that's something that's really hard to do, even if it's you know here's your papers, look at what you put, listen to what I put, maybe I even write it out on the board. Uh, it gets really difficult because even in a group, you know, in a class setting, they don't always, you know, quite get it all the way. So, you know, then you have to include, like, good lecturing techniques along with that. Um, sometimes, uh, what I used to do in the past is I'd make my answer key if I knew it's something that I won't have time to go over in class. And rather than, you know, write a hundred times what the right answer is on a hundred different papers, I'll put out my answer key and put that available on like our Moodle server or on my website so the kids can, you know, compare their answers to my answers. But again, you know, that's something that is, you know, that's requiring additional time outside of class on their part. And so uh, in, a in an ideal world, you know, every student would do that and every student would be motivated and intrinsically value the learning. But, you know, that's not necessarily always the case. So, you know, feedback, how, how well do I give it? I, I mean, I grade constantly, relentlessly, just hours and hours and hours, and I turn back papers, you know, with grades and or corrections on them faster than almost any of my other colleagues, and with greater quantity than almost any of my other colleagues. I used to, in my first couple years, I could say, no, I do this better than everybody else, but now it's I, I've slowed down a little bit as I try to like do more things and come up with better in-class activities with my students than just lecturing and then going over homework. So um, I, I think I do an okay job at it. Um, it's 
this is one of the hardest parts of learning because, you know, there's, there's the instruction and then, you know, you ask some kind of feedback from them and then you have to give them feedback on their feedback. And you need to offer corrections so that the students can see where they're at and see where you expect them to be. So, you know, what do you guys think? What am I, what am I missing about educational feedback that I should be throwing in there? You've got room in below for the comments, or you could even throw in a video response. You know, you want to join me in Vlogland. Thanks for watching, everybody.